So are traditional lectures as appropriate in the digital age? Well, the answer is no, they're not as appropriate. And they're not as appropriate for lots of reasons, because students studying have different, a much broader range of backgrounds. They have a different pre-18 educational experience. We have different class sizes. They have different sets of skills and abilities. They have an expectation about their educational experience, which is very different to the time at which the traditional lecture was seen as most appropriate. But it doesn't mean that the traditional lecture isn't good. And I think that there's often a, a view that we should rush headlong into the replacement of lectures through technology. I think what it needs is a sensible, and thoughtful reflection, which may well be disciplinary based rather than just across institutions or sectors, on what a lecture should be for. And at the heart of that for me is the motivation of our students, the inspiration of our students, if you like, and an area in which we seek to develop a relationship and a shared understanding with our students about what higher education is for. And the lecture can still do some of that with other technologies and other forms of contact wrapped around it. If you're going to look at a large class size lecture, which perhaps is becoming the norm in much of higher education, um, you might ask how inspirational or motivating that can be. Well, they can all lectures can be inspirational and motivating. That's a choice of the teacher. And, and firstly, you know, I use teacher advisedly. We all call le people lecturers in universities. We're teachers. We're trying to teach. We're trying to support and teach our students. So they can all be inspirational. You just have to choose to see it in that way and choose to develop your skills. It may not be that everybody can be an AJP tailor in the way that they teach and have people queuing around the block to want to hear them. But they can certainly have students coming along to their lectures wanting to, wanting to hear what they're, they're saying and, and seeing their value, the teacher's value, in their educational experience. If you take it to the extreme and students don't see it like that, why have any teachers? Why not just have our students teaching themselves? Just give them a curriculum and reading list, let them go and do it. Now, if that's what we really believe the value of our universities is, to prepare lists of stuff for our students to go and look for or at, then I think it's a sad state of affairs. There are brilliant teachers out there, and those teachers who perhaps aren't naturally as good still have a lot to offer, and it's our place to enthuse the teachers as well as the students, and to, to develop the teachers as well as the students. The physical constraint of the room doesn't necessarily prov provide or project absolute constraints on the way you choose to teach. And it may be that it's a lazy way to think of it, that you will walk in and talk at someone for 45 or 50 minutes. And my worry is that in the conversation about the digital age and the replacement of lectures, that many people will naturally see the replacement of a poorly conducted no a lecture about the transmission of knowledge to be replaced by a poorly conceived podcast that's about the transmission of knowledge. And that's not acceptable. You can use a lecture hall to stimulate to be interactive, to engage, to have even some of the students doing some of the teaching, even with four or five hundred people. Similarly, you can use technology to teach poorly. So I think it's more about people reflecting on what the nature of teaching is and how you want to support students and the educational experience than necessarily only thinking about the, the physical, in the sense of a lecture theatre, constraints of that room and it imposing a particular kind of teaching on you. I think the lecture, and certainly the face-to-face -face contact that should span, span and stem from it, is something that's critical to higher education and the development of people through higher education for society. What to do for those cases where there isn't an excellent lecturer? Concentrate on developing excellent lecturers. Now whether or not then you use their excellence in a fixed room to 200 people, or whether you use it to support people that can't attend or through distance is immaterial to me. Attacking the quality of, of lecturing and the quality of student support is the way forward. You then have the flexibility of choosing the channel through which you want to deliver it. My experience of, of non-face-to-face -face and real-time contact with students or support for them is that the investment of time and effort in that is often massively underestimated. That to provide an hour's good support for students offline takes a hell of a lot more time than most people think. It's a great thing. It's